Welcome to this Scratch tutorial. I'm Eric, and in this lesson, I'm going to teach you how to add gravity to one of your sprites. So for this tutorial, I've brought in this basketball sprite, and I've just drawn an easy rectangle um, and colored it black to make the ground. And what we're going to do is we're going to code this basketball to drop and stop when it hits the ground. I'm going to show you two ways that you can make gravity. The first way is a bit of an easier way, and all that's going to happen is the basketball is going to fall in a uniform speed until it hits the ground. So we're going to start by going to events and bring over this here when the green flag is clicked. We're then going to go to our control and we're going to bring in this forever. So we want gravity to act forever on this sprite until we click the stop. So when the green flag is clicked, forever, and then we're going to add some motion. So forever, we want the basketball to fall, and it's going to fall in the y-axis. So we're going to change y by 10. Now we're going to just change this, and we're going to have to put it as negative 1. We don't want it to change by 10. Uh, we want it to change by a negative number, and that means it's going to fall. If we kept it as a positive number, it would go up. We don't want it to go up, we want it to come down. So forever, change y by negative 1, and let's see what happens. And slowly our basketball drops to the ground, but it keeps going. Right? It keeps going because we didn't tell it about this ground yet. All it knows is to start um, where we where we put it, and it's just going to keep going down until we click that stop. So we set the basketball. What we're going to do is go to control, and we're going to bring in an if-then statement. And we're going to put that inside the forever and around the change y by negative 1. Now we're going to go to our green operations. And we're going to find this one that says not. So we want it not and sensing and we'll just drag this in, see that highlights in white, we'll let it go, drop it in there, and we're going to change this to ground. So when it's not touching the ground, okay, we're going to drag this into this if then. So if the sprite is not touching the ground, then it's going to change y by negative 1. Let's see what happens there. It falls slowly, and you're not going to stop it there. That's way too slow, right, for some gravity. So let's change this to negative 5 and see what happens there. Press the green flag, it goes, and it stops when it hits the ground. And there we have a simple way to code some gravity. And so each time we hit the start button, it falls until it hits the ground, and then we can stop it again. If we left it running, we can, we can move the basketball to a new location, and it'll continue to fall until it hits the ground. What you might want to do is go back to motion and decide on where you want your sprite to start from. So if that's a good starting point right there, and then we can go to this go to x, y coordinate, and we can drag that in. I'll just put that right under the when green flag clicked. So now every time we hit that green flag, it's going to start from that same point. So it's kind of like a reset uh, for the basketball. All right. So the next part we're going to look at is what if you want to make this a little more realistic? So instead of the basketball falling at a uniform rate every time, what if it accelerates as it drops until it hits the ground? So it's a bit more realistic. As you know, when you drop something, it will continue to pick up speed. Um, and that's what we'll have this do. So it's going to continue to accelerate. What we're going to do now is we're going to create our own block. So you're going to go down here to My Blocks. And you're going to make your own block. And we're going to call that block Gravity. It's really important that before we click OK, we're going to click this box here so it runs without a screen refresh. So make sure that's clicked and then click OK. So we've created this block where we're going to define what gravity does and then we've got a gravity block over here. Next, we want to make a variable. So we'll click on variables and click make a variable and we might as well call this variable gravity as well. Whoops. There we go. And we only want it to act on the basketball. So we're going to click for this sprite only and click OK. So we don't want the variable to affect the ground. We only want it to affect the basketball. And you'll see that your variable shows up here. The basketball gravity is zero. Um, if you don't want that to appear on your screen, you can, of course, uncheck this and it'll disappear. But for now, it's worthwhile taking a look because we'll see this number change as the basketball drops.
So we've created our gravity, we've created our variable. Next, we're going to go to events, and we're going to say when green flag is clicked, we're going to reset both the gravity and the location of the ball. So we can go to our variables. We're going to set gravity to zero. So every time we click the green flag, we want gravity to start from zero. And we're going to go up to motion, and we're going to tell the basketball where to start. So we're going to say go to these x and y coordinates, and there that is there. And finally, we're going to go to control and drag in this forever. Okay, so we want gravity, just like last time, we want, grav we want gravity to run the entire time that this is running until we click the stop. So we're going to bring in forever, go to my blocks, and bring in this gravity block. So there we go. If we click on the green flag now, though, we see nothing happens. The only difference is now this defined gravity block is highlighted. And that's because the computer's running this code here, but it gets to gravity and it starts doing what it's told to do in gravity. But it hasn't been told to do anything in gravity yet. We haven't programmed that. So of course it's doing nothing. So we'll click stop there. So now what we need to do is we need to define what this gravity block does. So what we want to do is bring in an if then statement. So we'll go to control, we'll find the if then, and we'll drag that over and connect it. And so it's this is very similar to what we did in the uh, first way to code for the gravity for the basketball. We're going to go back to our operations. We're going to go grab this knot and then go to sensing and go to our touching, drag that into the knot operator and change it to ground. So we'll bring this up into here now give yourself some more space. So if the basketball is not touching the ground, then we're going to go to our variables and change gravity by negative one. And again, that negative is very important. So we're making sure it's falling towards the ground. So it's going uh, in a negative direction down that Y axis. So negative one, and we're going to now give it some motion. So go up to motion, Scroll down and find change y by. And instead of having a number here this time, though, we're going to change it by a variable. And that variable is gravity. So we're going to drag gravity over and drop it into there. So what happens now is it's going to start at zero. So this gravity counter is going to start at zero because that's what we've told it to do here. Then every time that it runs through or cycles through this forever loop, it's going to change gravity by negative one. So the first time through, gravity is going to change so from zero to negative one. Second time through, it's going to add a negative one. So negative one and negative one is negative two. Then it's going to add a negative one again when it runs through this. So negative two and negative one is three. And then negative three and negative one is four. And it's going to continue. And that's what gives the basketball or your sprite its acceleration. So let's cl click on the green flag and see what happens. And we can see on our counter, it fell until it hit the ground um, and it stopped at negative 20. And of course, the reason it stopped when we hit the ground is because we told it here, if it's not touching the ground, then it's going to do this action. Now you might notice, depending on how you've created your ground and where you've placed it, the basketball might sink into the ground a little bit. So just in case that happens, you can see it's it hasn't happened here, but it might happen to you. So what we're going to do is we're going to include another if statement. So go back to your control and we're going to go to if, drag that in, if sensing, we're going to go to this time, if it's touching the ground, we want it to do something. So what we want it to do is we want it to stop gravity. So we're going to go to the variables. We're going to set gravity to zero. And last thing, we want this to repeat until so I'm going to go up to control and scroll down a little bit, repeat until I'm going to drag that around this if, and we want it to repeat until once again, it's not, so bring out the not sensing. So it's not touching the ground. I'm going to bring that in here. It's going to change Y. So if I go up to motion, we're going to change y by 1. 
and that's just telling it it's just going to sit one pixel above the ground here and we'll bring set gravity out from that repeat until and just so drop it here so it's sitting within this if statement and finally we can click this again and see the ball drops and you can see it's just hovering that one pixel above the ground so again if you're noticing that your basketball is sinking into the ground a little bit um, that'll help fix that so let's just see maybe if i move the ground um, we'll go back to the basketball and we'll stop it start it again okay and it's going to stop above the ground there if we didn't have this in there if we disconnect it um, see it synced in behind the ground okay we don't want that to happen so connect this and hit it again and it's going to stop there so that's what we we're trying to avoid was it sinking behind or over top of the ground depending on where your ground is placed so that is how uh, you can create gravity in two different ways if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and if you haven't done so already make sure you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any more awesome videos until next time take care and keep learning